Well, today's subject is INS, ENS, and Global Navigation Satellite Systems. Um, well, nowadays, um, modern geodesy uh, is part of uh, geomatics. Uh, if we are speaking about geomatics, we mean uh, that it is all the technologies needed to uh, manipulate with spatial data. Uh, spatial data capture, uh, spatial data calculations, uh, making models of uh, territory, models, uh, spatial models of environment, uh, city environment, natural environment, etc. Uh, we have uh, huge progress in technologies and uh, we have been spoken about LIDAR technologies, uh, about uh, GIS and BIM technologies, building information modeling. Uh, another uh, technologies is remote sensing and photogrammetry. Uh, for example, um, using drones, uh, using unmanned uh, vehicles to uh, make uh, a lot of uh, photo images of territory and then uh, making calculations and getting spatial coordinates of every uh, building, every road, and so on. Another technology is uh, global navigation satellite systems. You probably know about this kind of technology because uh, nowadays in smartphone, in laptop, uh, in uh, photo cameras, and uh, even more in sport watches, uh, you can uh, find this small chip that uh, Calculate coordinates uh, of uh, you if you are outside uh, and um, you can check in, uh, find your location on a map, for example, on Google Maps or uh, Bing Maps or um, OpenStreetMap or something like this. Well, uh, geomatics is a discipline uh, highly connected with geography and uh, uh, so we can uh, see the timeline of the inventions uh, how people are able uh, to navigate, uh, to uh, capture the spatial data, to understand how to uh, understand the position on the Earth's surface. Uh, well, uh, the first uh, step of the journey is uh, 2,000 years uh, before Christmas, be before uh, church. Um, it was ancient Egypt, and they uh, provide a uh, first uh, map, a first um, Earth's surface uh, image. Uh, then, uh, 312 uh, years BC in ancient uh, Rome, uh, they uh, have found
uh, trip maps and uh, they um, were um, great engineers they have been uh, constructing uh, Roman roads all over the empire and they uh, make maps uh, that uh, maps were like uh, long long uh, strings of uh, papyrus or pergament uh, and uh, they mark the location of every point uh, on a road while uh, people journey all over empire. Another invention is Egypt. It's a uh, firehouse. firehouse. Uh, it was useful for ships to find the way in the night, in the fog, etc. Uh, Chinese inventors uh, decided to make compass. Uh, they, uh, first of all, put a magnetic needle, metal needle, on a small uh, piece of uh, wood. <coughs> this piece of wood uh, was put in a glass of water, and uh, this needle show uh, north and south direction. Another step is uh, stellar navigation. Uh, they have in invented uh, in Great Britain six ton. Uh, it is uh, equipment that help us to uh, get uh, latitude coordinate. Uh, while measuring the uh, zenith distance of a sun, of the sun, and uh, I will uh, tell you much more about sextant uh, more in this lecture. Uh, another step is uh, precise chronometer. Uh, precise chronometer help uh, us to understand the time of uh, noon uh, where the sun is stay uh, in the highest point uh, in the sky and uh, it is 12 o'clock uh, in every territory uh, at every point uh, and this precise uh, watch, this precise clock, uh, help us to understand the difference between uh, Greenwich, uh, 12 o'clock and 12 o'clock, in the particular point on the Earth's surface. And that is why uh, the latitude, the longitude uh, coordinate uh, is possible uh, to be calculated. Um, 1959, 1859 in Canada. Hello? Well, my lecture, if you have two words, tell me. Okay, I Ну, може, хай Іра зробить. Угу. А, uh, well, ship's horn is a uh, loud sound uh, that helps to ships uh, find uh, themselves in the sea. Uh, while uh, it is fog outside, 
and uh, nobody can see nothing. Uh, another invention is uh, radar. Um, you probably can see this uh, invention in uh, movies, in Hollywood movies, uh, while the radio waves are scanning territory around uh, this, uh, the, our uh, point and find every metal ship or um, island or another objects outside uh, with uh, radio waves. And the last invention is a global navigation satellite system that ha uh, they have been invented in um, 1990s. And uh, then uh, it was uh, high progress in these technologies. Uh, we uh, begin use uh, this uh, navigation equipment for uh, road, for cars, for tourists, and uh, for everybody who has this technology on their smartphones. Well, <laughs> uh, nowadays, um, there are uh, three main technologies of uh, navigation. It is inertial navigation system, stellar navigation system, and uh, global navigation satellite systems. Um, very briefly about uh, inertial navigation system. Uh, this system uses inertial sensors such as uh, gyros and accelerometers to establish a horizontal coordinate system of the Earth, extract the east and north accelerations of the carrier, and integrate uh, the time to obtain the velocity of the carrier. After further integration, you can get the movement of the carrier and the travel of the carrier on longitude and latitude um, can be obtained. Uh, this technology has a uh, few advantages. First of all, it is fully autonomous navigation system that can uh, continuously provide all navigation parameters, including position, heading, attitude, and speed with high short-term accuracy. In addition to the two kinds of a priori navigation environments, such as gravitational uh, field of the Earth and the angular velocity of rotation, it is not necessary to receive external information during the walk. So it's free from outside interference and can walk uh, around the clock. It does not uh, radiate energy when walking. Uh, the carrier uh, has covered. The INC also has its disadvantages. The, since the trip is obtained by integrating the time twice, the gyro drift and the accelerometer error increase with the time, uh, will increase the position error. So it must be corrected or uh, readjusted with the increase of the walking time. High precision INS must require high precision inertial components uh, strict requirements of manufacturing process and assembly process, high overall system cost and long initial alignment time. Uh, you can see the principal um, schema of the uh, in inertial navigation systems. Nowadays, these systems mainly used in uh, different vehicles, cars, ships, missiles, for military use. Uh, celestial navigation system uses star sensor to detect stars on the uh, celestial sphere. Uh, here you can, uh, on the right uh, in the slide, you can see how uh, a simple sextant uh, works. Uh, you just uh, look in the 
telescope eyepiece and see uh, uh, see horizon and the sun and then, then you um, using tangent uh, screw uh, you can uh, find uh, the sun position and uh, making inclination of the mirrors uh, you can uh, put the sun uh, in the position up to horizon and then you can uh, look at uh, alidad at uh, the scale of the uh, equipment and see the uh, heights of sun uh, the angle of uh, sun uh, between uh, directions to the horizon and direction to the sun and uh, it will be uh, the latitude of uh, the point where you are so nowadays these technologies are much more uh, um, has uh, some inventions uh, uh, the precise coordinates of the celestial body relative to the carrier are measured according to the precise coordinates of the celestial body on the uh, celestial sphere, sphere and the motion of the earth um, calculate carrier position hidden or attitude through corresponding mathematical model it is uh, an autonomous passive navigation system that provides accurate in inertial position assistance information for position heading uh, and carrier that does not drift over time however uh, celestial navigation systems has uh, has its own application restrictions such as uh, relatively low data date rate and it's uh, vulnerable to weather condition where the, uh, there are uh, clouds in the sky or fog you uh, just um, you are not able to use this system uh, however they decided to uh, use a combination or integration of inertial navigation system and celestial navigation system and use the high precision information provided by the star sensor to correct the inertial navigation system effectively eliminating the INS uh, precision bo uh, burden and retaining the INC INS with the features of strong autonomy Due to the poor anti-interference ability of satellite navigation systems, the utilization rate in war time is low, making celestial navigation system uh, an irreplaceable substitute in strategic, strategic applications. Uh, so, mm, for example, many missiles uh, does not use uh, GPS navigation but use uh, inertial navigation uh, here you can see the principal schema of uh, celestial navigation uh, we have um, sensors uh, these sensors find uh, star object in the observed area uh, and uh, then you using mathematical uh, formulas uh, it is possible to calculate uh, coordinates and trajectory of uh, carrier on the earth surface uh, well and the uh, next technology is uh, GNSS 
means Global Navigation Satellite System. Uh, it refers to a constellation of satellites providing signals from space that transmit position and timing data to GNSS receivers. By definition, GNSS provides global coverage. We have nowadays a few uh, constellations. Uh, for example, European Galileo, um, the United States uh, GPS system, Russia's uh, Global Navigation Sputnik system, GLONASS and China's Beidou Navigation Satellite System. Uh, well, the project was started in 1973 to overcome the limitations of previous navigation systems. GPS was created by the United States Department of Defense and was ordinary, ordinarily run with uh, 24 satellites. It became fully operational in 1994 at the cost of 12 billion uh, United States taxpayer dollars, uh, freely accessible by anyone with a GPS receiver. Um, truly speaking, um, navigation by radio as an aid uh, has been practiced in Germany since uh, 1907, first used as a radio directional finder between radio radio towers. Then, uh, also, a regional navigation satellite system and augmentation systems all over the world exist. To improve the performance of GNSS, some countries uh, launch uh, regional navigation satellite systems. Uh, Indian regional navigation satellite system, uh, quasi-zenith satellite system in Japan, and satellite-based augmentation system that uh, can make corrections of uh, signals uh, of satellite systems <clears throat> all over uh, the world, or not so sorry, not all over the world, but uh, at uh, particular territories. Uh, for example, wide area augmentation systems for US, uh, for USA, for the USA. A European geostationary navigation overlay system, EGNOS, etc. Uh, and now a short break, uh, five minutes. Um, uh, here you can see examples of uh, the beginning of the GPS instrumentation and federal uh, policy. Uh, here, uh, Rear Admiral John Bosler and Charles uh, uh, Charleston uh, we are speaking about the importance of uh, global posi posi uh, positioning system in the United States foreign policy. And uh, here you can see the modern GPS policy, uh, civilian uh, civil use uh, since 1980. Uh, the brief history of the technology. In the 1957, uh, USSR uh, launches uh, Sputnik 1. It was uh, the first uh, the Earth satellite. Uh, 
This satellite gives uh, Massachusetts Te Institute of Technology Scientists the idea for a positioning system based on radio signals. Um, in 1959, uh, the United States Navy built Transit. Transit. Uh, it was the first navigation system uh, to really rely on satellites. Uh, then uh, the scientific study has been continuing and the Aerospace Corporation of the United States military uh, decided to join the force with Navy uh, engineers and um, the final uh, system, uh, the testing begins in 1974. Uh, the proposed system included uh, 24 satellites. Um, then they decided to put atomic clocks uh, uh, to help provide more precise uh, time measurements. In 1983, uh, in response to Russia shooting down a um, South Korean plan in the Pacific, uh, President Roland, Ronald Reagan offers GPS receivers to all commercial aircraft uh, once the system is completed. This was uh, offered to enhance uh, safety. Um, the United States government uh, begins contract with private companies to develop GPS receivers. And uh, finally, in 1989, the first fully operational GPS satellite uh, has been uh, launched. Uh, mm. Uh, then, uh, the huge variety of equipment has been worked out. Uh, first of all, it was uh, Magellan NAV uh, 1000, its small handheld navigation device. Uh, then, in 1995, the last of 27 satellites, satellites uh, was launched. And um, then they uh, put uh, the GPS chips into cell phones, into car computers, uh, into fitness uh, bracelets or hand watches and so on. Uh, nowadays, personal GPS produ products uh, search including in-car navigation systems, etc., etc., etc. So, you can see the um, evolution of the technology. Um, time or engineering efforts and produce performance. First of all, it was military applications, then civil applications, land, sea and air, personal use, uh, outdoors and uh, dependent use for children, pets, uh, different uh, objects, etc. Nowadays, uh, these curves could also be applied to other factors such as size, battery life, ease of use, etc. Uh, the level of accuracy is uh, really high. Uh, the reliabil reliability is uh, not very high and the cost is almost uh, very high too of the technology. Uh, however, you just n need, um, it is not necessary to pay for service, you just need to pay for uh, chip inside your device. 
Nowadays, the, it is there are uh, five main uh, satellite constellations around the world. First of all, it is GPS, uh, European Galileo, um, Russia, Russian GLONASS system, and Beidou system of China, and quasi Zenit satellite system of Japan. Uh, here you can, uh, in the bottom uh, of the picture, you can see um, the explanation how uh, the uh, vehicle, the car, uses technology to navigate itself into the city. And it is a big problem because a uh, very small piece of sky is uh, open. Mm, all these great buildings uh, protect uh, the receiver uh, from um, satellite uh, signals. Um, mm, here you can see the uh, technical characteristics of GPS, uh, Galileo, GLONASS, Beidou, and the quasi Zenit uh, Japan uh, satellite system. Uh, these technical uh, characteristics are available um, on the net, so you can find it yourself. Um, uh, regional uh, navigation satellite system. Independent regional uh, navigation uh, satellite system being developed by developed by India. Uh, you probably know that uh, nowadays uh, the India has much more population than China. So uh, the economy of the India of India is growing rap rapidly and they also are launching satellites, uh, launching missiles with satellites. So, uh, mm, primary uh, service of this uh, regional navigation satellite system uh, is uh, India territory and uh, 1,500 kilometers from its boundary. Um, it has eight satellites. Uh, three on um, geostationary orbits and five on geosynchronous orbits. The International Telecommunication Union between uh, uh, allow uh, the frequencies uh, between 1,559 uh, megahertz uh, to uh, 1610 megahertz. Uh, uh, all these frequencies are designated as radio navigation satellite service. Uh, well, uh, American satellites use signals between uh, 1560 megahertz and 1580 megahertz, uh, and the, another <clears throat> uh, navigation system use another frequencies. Signals and services. Uh, well, uh, in the picture you can see <clears throat> uh, the different frequencies of uh, that are used by uh, different satellite uh, constellations. Uh, blue are uh, frequencies for Galileo. Uh, green uh, is uh, frequency for GLONASS. Uh, yellow for Beidou. Uh, and uh, brown for GPS L1, L2, 
and uh, red for GPS L5 uh, frequency. So, um, all the satellite system uh, has its own structure. However, um, every um, navigation system consists of space segment, control segment, and user segment. Space segment consists of satellite constellations. Control segment consists of a global network of ground facilities and track that track the uh, satellites, monitor their transmissions, perform analysis, and send commands and data to the constellation. And user segment, it uh, includes the equipment and the persons who receive the signals. Uh, here you can see an example of space segment. Uh, it is just... Uh, uh, one day, uh, <coughs> uh, it is uh, the image from NASA's Visible Earth project, and here you can see a huge amount of uh, different satellites, of uh, different constellations, and also uh, augmentation satellites. A GPS control segment. Uh, you can see a uh, huge variety of uh, different uh, land uh, control uh, facilities. Um, the main master control station in Colorado Springs in the United States and uh, a lot of uh, uh, monitoring stations in uh, South Korea, in Bahrain, in the United Kingdom, etc. Um, uh, well, in my opinion, uh, the United States has much, uh, the, m maybe uh, one of the wider uh, GPS control uh, network all over the world. And the user segment, um, you can use different equipment, uh, global navigation satellite equipment for uh, geophysics, uh, geodesy and surveying, uh, land surveying and uh, construction uh, or city su surveying or building surveying uh, for different um, climatology, climatology, uh, precision farm, farming, aircraft navigation, animal tracking, etc., etc., etc. Well, uh, speaking about uh, orbits, uh, it's not the uh, orbit without sugar, it's another orbit, uh, it's, uh, mm, well, you can see uh, uh, in the picture, uh, you can compare the lunar orbit, the orbit of our natural satellite uh, moon, uh, it is, it rotates, uh, around uh, the Earth um, on the height of um, 30, uh, 384,000 kilometers. And uh, another uh, orbits uh, we can classify in three groups. High Earth and geosynchronous orbit, mid Earth orbit, and low Earth orbit. Uh, another component, another parameter of every orbit is orbital inclination. It is the angle between uh, satellite orbit and Earth uh, rotation plane. Uh, inclination is the angle of the orbit in relation to Earth's equator. equator. And um, a satellite uh, that 
orbit directly above the equator has zero inclination. Uh, if a satellite orbit from the North Pole, geographic, not magnetic, to the South Pole, its inclination is uh, 90 degrees. Uh, well, geosynchronous, its orbit matches uh, Earth's rotation. The satellite seems to stay in place over a single longitude, so it may drift north to south, <coughs> or it may be inclined, uh, for example, inclined uh, geosynchronous orbit. And another uh, example is uh, geostationary, uh, a geosynchronous orbit uh, where the satellite is directly over the equator, is eccentric T and inclination at zero. Satellites are placed in uh, height Earth's orbit to match Earth's orbit. And uh, between this um, sun synchronous and geostationary orbit is the uh, the place where the GPS orbits uh, exists, exist. Uh, it uh, is uh, 2,000 kilometers altitude with a uh, velocity of uh, 13, um, maybe almost 14 kilometers per hour. It's huge velocity. Uh, however, these satellites are in outer rotates rotate in uh, outer space um, without any atmosphere so they can rotate freely another example is uh, molia orbit it uh, was a soviet union research satellite uh, the main idea of the orbit is um, being uh, uh, it works well for observing high latitudes. Both Earth's orbits, most scientific satellites and many weather satellites are in a nearly circular low Earth orbit. Uh, well, uh, about coordinate systems. We have two kind of coordinate systems. Uh, first of all, um, orthonormal uh, base vector and the same scale along all three axes. Uh, well, <clears throat> in this uh, Cartesian coordinate system, you can see that the coordinates of every point on the Earth's surface or above this Earth's uh, surface, um, we have every point uh, three coordinates, x, y, and z. The at axis uh, direction is international reference pole. It means uh, it's uh, the mean position of the North Pole during uh, some period of time. Uh, the x-axis uh, and y-axis uh, lays in the equator plane. Uh, three levels of coordinate system. Space fixed or inter inertial, inertial systems in which the position of stars are fixed or almost fixed and in which the motion of artificial satellites can be formulated according to the Newton, Newtonian laws of mechanics. Uh, Earth fixed systems in which all terrestrial points can be expressed conventionally as well as vehicles in motion on the Earth's surface and local horizon systems fixed to observatories or instruments and often uh, oriented horizontally uh, with one axis pointing towards north. Uh, while, while we put our instrument on a tripod, uh, we use um, local horizon system.
uh, while we measure uh, horizontal and vertical angles uh, using measurements uh, are uh, making in local horizon system. Orbital orientation in a space fixed course, coordinate system. You can see uh, the elements of orbit. Uh, well, you just uh, can imagine that uh, this kind of not very complicated mathematics. Uh, however, in the picture you can see ecliptic. It's the plane of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. Another plane is uh, celestial equator. It's just the plane uh, orthogonal to the North uh, celestial uh, direction and then uh, we have two points uh, where uh, ecliptic intersects uh, celestial, celestial equator it's a vernal equinox and autumn equinox and uh, this is the main points uh, of uh, for orbital orientation uh, well, our fixed uh, reference system, uh, it rotates uh, with the Earth. Um, here you can see um, main parameters of uh, ellipsoid, Earth ellipsoid, semi-major axis, uh, flattening, uh, flattening factor, Earth's angular velocity, and gravitation constant, and speed of the light in vacuum. All these constants are used for WGS84 constants, and this coordinate system, WAR geodetic system, 1984, that is used, that uh, we use uh, for global navigation satellite system coordinates. Geocentric reference system. Uh, it is Earth-centered, Earth-fixed, and rotates with the Earth, hence the coordinates of a point fixed on the surface of the Earth does not change. Uh, well, the main uh, coordinates in this uh, uh, geocentric reference system are um, latitude, you can see the uh, phi angle in the picture, uh, lambda angle is a uh, longitude, and uh, the schema of recalculation from um, Cartesian coordinates to this uh, geodetical coordinates. Uh, well, uh, this uh, the G every GNSS uh, satellite uh, has its orbit around the center of mass of the Earth. They have no concept of where the surface of the Earth is. So, the um, global navigation satellite receiver, which is one of the surfaces of the Earth, uh, ju is just as well be in outer space, as far as the GPS coordinate of Earth-centered, Earth-fixed XYZ is concerned. Uh, the microcomputer in the receiver converts these XYZ coordinates to latitude, longitude, and ellipsoidal height. Uh, well, uh, the very important uh, note uh, that um, we just 
can calculate the ellipsoidal heat. Uh, but uh, for our practical use, uh, we must uh, use uh, normal heat uh, or heat above ge geoid, uh, not above ellipsoid. Well, orbits of satellites. In the picture, the orbits of two GPS satellites in a space-fixed geocentric coordinate system. And the orbits of these uh, two satellites in an Earth-fixed uh, ge uh, geocentric coordinate system. You can see that um, uh, the velocities of the Earth rotation and the velocity of every satellite's uh, produce uh, such uh, kind of uh, uh, complicated uh, orbit. Ground track of every GPS satellite. Uh, for example, we um, it is uh, all uh, every uh, GPS satellite has its own ID. For example, ID number ten. Uh, this 10th satellite uh, has uh, such kind of uh, orbit and the ground track is following. Um, current position of the satellite is, uh, for example, above uh, Africa and it will be visible in 9, 10, 11, 12 up to 15 hours uh, for um, receiver is situated um, in the Philippines for example yeah? uh, global navigation satellite system geocentric uh, reference systems we have few different uh, coordinate system. Uh, first of all, parameter Zimli uh, 1990. It's reference system of Russia. International terrestrial reference system, ITRS, maintained by the International Earth Rotation Service, which monitors the Earth orientation parameters for the scientific community. And World Geodetic System of uh, 1984. It's a reference system of the uh, GPS. It's compatible uh, with the International Terrestrial Refer Reference System. And Galileo Terrestrial Reference Frame, an independent realization of the International Terrestrial uh, Reference System. Well, mm, while we are speaking about terrestrial system, uh, it means uh, just uh, main parameters. However, these parameters are changing in time, for example, uh, the coordinates uh, of uh, ITRS, ITRS coordinates of every point in uh, 2000, um, 010, and in uh, 2020 uh, will be uh, different because of Earth rotation uh, parameters, because of uh, North Pole uh, pre precision and notation, and uh, different uh, because of um, geophysical uh, processes, etc. Uh, space techniques that are contributing to the determination of reference systems. Uh, there are um, lunar laser uh, uh, ranging, while uh, they use uh, laser uh, line from uh, the Earth to the uh, uh, specific equipment on the moon's uh, surface and this uh, 
beam of light uh, returns directly to the observation point and they can calculate the uh, distance between the Earth and uh, the Moon with high precision. Uh, satellite altimetry. Mm, it's a measuring of a global sea level. Mm, satellite gravimetry. Measurement of gravity. Um, So-called DORIS, Doppler Arta, Ar Arbitography and uh, Radio Positioning Integrated by Satellites. Mm, and uh, Satellite Laser Ranging. Mm, very similar to the loser, Lunar uh, Laser ranging, uh, ranging, but while they uh, produce uh, the laser pulse to the uh, laser uh, reflector on a satellite and this uh, impulse uh, goes back and uh, the position of a satellite on an orbit um, they can calculate with a high precision. And the last one, very long baseline interferometry. Uh, while uh, in outer space, uh, radio waves uh, occur. You probably um, know about quasars. Quasar, it's a kind of... Uh, space object that uh, produce uh, radio waves and while the these radio waves come uh, to the earth um, the moment of time when uh, this wave uh, goes to the diff different radio telescopes are different and so <clears throat> the distance between these radio telescopes can be calculated with a high precision. Uh, about time system. Time is the most important element of GNSS. Uh, we have different uh, kind of time measuring. For example, international atomic time, coordinate universal time, etc., etc., etc. Um, we have leap seconds, uh, we have um, uh, we use, for example, for GPS uh, UTS time of January 6, uh, 1890 and uh, 1980 at that epoch. Uh, Atomic time was ahead by 19 seconds. Uh, well, it's techni technical issues. Uh, it's about GLONASS time. In this picture, you can see atomic clock on a board of Galileo satellite. Well, every, um, every satellite has uh, um, four atomic clock on its board. Uh, four means uh, four separate different uh, atomic clock. Uh, it is <clears throat> necessary uh, to get the continuous time measuring on every satellite, so um, they decided to put four clocks uh, if uh, error occurs, um, the satellite uh, can use another clock. Uh, the geoid, Earth gravity model. Why is geoid important in GNSS positioning? Uh, well, uh, the Earth is not a perfect ellipsoid. And in the picture, you can see the red uh, areas. It is the, when uh, geoid is above ellipsoid. And blue areas when 
a geoid is below ellipsoid. So we need to uh, uh, reference all our measurements to the different uh, reference surfaces. In the picture uh, at the bottom of the image, um, in the bottom of the image, you can see um, topographical surface, ellipsoid, and geoid. Uh, well, <clears throat> while we put instrument on the topographic surface, we can use a uh, direction of a plumb line uh, to horizont this instrument. However, uh, GPS coordinates are connected with the uh, vertical to the ellipsoid. In every point, we have deflection of the vertical. It's a, it is a small angle between direction of a plumb line and the perpendicular to the ellipsoid. So uh, we just uh, need to use different um, geoid models for um, GPS calculations. Uh, the geoid is completely defined by gravity. It, it is lumpy because gravity is not consistent across the surface of the Earth. The geoid is an equipotential surface that approximates or fits the least squares, uh, in the least square sense, the mean sea level. The geoid height uh, or geoid undulation and designates by N. It is the height from the surface of an ellipsoid to the geoid. Uh, the separation between the geoid and the smooth ellipsoid worldwide varies from about 85 meters west of island to about minus 100 meters in the area uh, in the Indian Ocean near Sri Lanka. Uh, and while using GPS receivers, we just need to convert, uh, make conversion uh, of heights uh, from ellipsoidal to orthometric heights. You can see the orthometric uh, height is elevation approximating the main mean sea level. Ellipsoidal height, ele elevation above or below the reference ellipsoid and geoid height uh, offset between uh, these elevations. Here you can see examples of different geoid models that can be downloaded for your territory from the Potsdam uh, site of uh, Geophysic uh, Potsdam Institute. And uh, Next time we will uh, speak about GNSS applications and the use of the technology in uh, engineering or building ge geology, uh, geodesy. Thank you for your attention. Uh, we have uh, maybe three minutes to the end of our lecture. Uh, shortly, um, the huge amount of applications, uh, location-based services, civil applications, surveying, mapping, and GIS, uh, GNSS-based products, space applications, scientific applications, military applications, autonomous applications, and other applications. Uh, tourist information, games, carpooling and transport on demand, um, road, aviation and rail, navigation, maritime, in industry. And uh, first of all, um, uh, much more interesting for us, it's land surveying and building surveying. Uh, GNSS provides very high accuracy positioning for geodetic and projects. Uh, control 
uh, establishment. Uh, uh, we use uh, GPS coordinates uh, for data capture. Uh, on the left part, on, on the right part of the image, you can see um, construction worker or surveyor who is uh, working with Uh, high precise uh, geodetic GNSS receiver and the controller uh, this small one something like uh, uh, cell phone and also we use uh, GPS for uh, or global navigation satellite system for aerial survey and manned and unmanned aeroplanes drones, uh, cameras, radars, uh, and so on, and so on. And uh, different uh, GNSS-based products, space applications, scientific applications, measurement of uh, different uh, geosciences uh, in atmosphere, in ocean, in ionosphere, military application, autonomous application uh, for uh, for example autonomous driving or autonomous flying and other applications uh, well uh, thank you for your attention and goodbye